Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Breakfast with the Brookses. I am super excited for part two. This is the first time yes. that we've ever done a live part two. If you guys are just jumping in uh, on this broadcast, my name is Glenn P. Brooks Jr. I'm an author. I'm a speaker. I'm a coach. And this lovely light-skinned young lady with the red lipstick on. <laughs> it's Cherie Brooks Jr. I'm also an author, speaker, relationship and Life Balance Coach, and I want to welcome you guys this morning to Breakfast with the Brooks. I want to thank you guys for subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you are new to the channel, please make sure that you subscribe and ring the bell so that you can get the notification. I'm excited, guys. Listen, we have some special guests in the building. This is part two of a live that we did the previous week. We're going to pick up a conversation that we started, uh, but here in the studio, if you want to call our, our home away from home a studio, I've got Chris and Angie Adams. Guys, it's great to have you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to have you. For those of you guys who are tuning in, uh, and maybe this is your first week, and I, first of all, I want to encourage you, go back and look at the replay of last week, mm -hmm. because this is sort of, we set the stage last week of what we're going to talk about. So, Cherie, we've been talking about, um, and, and the, before I go there, let me just say this. So, Chris and Angie are a part of our MAPS Relationship Academy. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's the academy that Shri and I started probably a little more than two years ago now. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, it's an online relationship academy designed specifically for people who literally want to grow their relationships on purpose with great intentionality and grow the skill sets that it takes to make them successful. Right. Um, in that academy, we have five different online group coaching environments. We have one for couples. We have one for parents. We have one for singles now who want to get married. We also have one. a ladies only group and also a men's only group that meets weekly. Yep, and all of these groups meet separately. They meet every week. And the whole point is to help them grow. And that's how we, we, we met you guys. And so uh, we did a, a live workshop, as we often do at churches, um, you know, really throughout the country. And it just so happened that this particular weekend we were doing a, a live workshop at y'all's church, at the church you guys were going to at the time. And, and I, I just, I remember clearly, clearly, um, and, and I don't forget moments. I don't know what my, I don't know why my mind works that way. Like you have people that'll say, oh, I, I'm not good with names or I'm not good with faces. Like I'm very good with names. I'm even better with faces. But I'm never wrong about stories. Right. And I don't know why that is. Like once I see stuff, it gets etched here and I remember them. And I remember you guys sitting toward the back mm -hmm. during a workshop that we had. And Angie was pretty much crying off and on or looked teary eyed throughout. Chris was very cold and calloused and looked aloof. Um, he would laugh here and there. And it was funny because when I later found out that your temperament was quite the opposite, like Chris is a major jokester and he <laughs> loves having a good time. Uh, but there clearly was a problem there. So I want you guys to talk to us just for those that maybe are new and did not catch last week's introduction. Just really quickly, y'all's backstory. You've been married uh, for a minute. Um, it did, it started out really bad. Um, it's gotten really good, but there's some work that you guys have done in the past. Yeah, for like a quick summary, uh, we've been together for 10 years. We were together for five, married for five. Uh, for eight of those years, we pretty much were just broken individuals, like two broken people trying to somehow magically make a whole relationship. Just uh, surviving. Really. Yeah. Right, right. Um, and that the first eight years were all literally just survival. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a whole bunch of road bumps. Like I had an affair. Uh, I mean... I, we were both dealing with personal things, um, her coming from like an alcoholic family, me coming from an abusive family, um, just everything that could be wrong was. Right. Um, and we basically both just hit a point where at the same time, we both were like, we need some help. Yeah. You know, yeah. we had tried counseling, pre-pastors, and nothing seemed to work until... We came to y'all and got. I think that was like our rock bottom wow. day, yeah. probably, or yeah. weekend. Yeah, and I, I, I remember, you know, just kind of going up to you guys and just because, you know, it was a workshop, so there was interaction. Right. And I just noticed, and I don't know if you had said something to me, I don't remember the exact conversation. But I got the feeling that you were like, we need help. And, yeah, like, this is it. Right. And, and it was it was your, I think it was more your demeanor than comment. anything it's else. Like it was like you could see it all on I could just face. see it. And yeah. it was like, no, don't leave us. Yeah, yeah. I 
oh, I'm going to cry now. But, like, <laughs> I remember feeling like begging you guys, like, please. Yeah. yeah. Right. We yeah. need you. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and it's funny because, um, Angie, and it's, 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 it's amazing how far you guys have grown because yes, when Angie, yeah. when we first met Angie, she would tell you on the front end, I'm a crier. Yeah. So just yeah. know Every on the front end, right. I will <laughs> break down, like, at, just yeah. for no reason. But she was reason. hurting. But she was hurting. She was hurting. And she was reaching out. And, 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 and the I crazy mean, thing is that she, she didn't cry nearly as much. No, as she doesn't. Did. No, no. Yeah. And this little cry here was like a happy cry. Yeah, yeah no right. doubt. Right. No doubt. No doubt. You were starting to say something. Better. No, and I think that, you know, I want to commend you on that because oftentimes people will be going through that hard spot. They're going through in their relationships and they're scared to reach out. Yeah. They're scared to really reach out to people and they'll go through that by themselves. Yep. And you don't have to. Yeah. So you don't God, have to go through it by yourself. So guys, really quickly, I know um, you know this was a message that we recorded uh, last uh, week, but we're here on the chat live. So we are engaging you live right now. So do us a favor. If you have questions, um, Chris and Angie will answer them. Um, we'll answer them. We'll get you guys connected to our community in a way that can help you. Uh, so let's, let's engage. If you are here for the very first time, put first timer in the chat. Um, if this is your very first time on our live, uh, we appreciate you for being here again. Ring the bell, subscribe to the channel if you like anything that you see here. Uh, Chris, we have been talking about a book that ra revolutionized sort of the way you guys approach your relationship. I've heard of the book. I had heard of the book. I'd never read it. Um, but you guys, what I didn't know until we started reading it in the community, that you guys had had this book for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And it had not really, quote, worked for you. And that's, to me, in of itself, is a, is, a, is, a, is a concept that needs to be explained. When people say something doesn't work for me, I'm always leery as to, did it not work or did you not work it? Right. Right. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Or what environment, what headspace were you in when you mm -hmm. said that something, quote, didn't work? Uh, but it's working because I think now you guys not only are working it because you want to, but because you now have a community to help mm -hmm. you work through that together. So talk to us a little bit about this idea of love and respect. Last week, we, we talked about just sort of y'all's backstory and we dealt with the whole you know, understanding that you had a part to play, that you had to show up even when you didn't want to. You were certainly convicted by the growth that this young lady was going through. I mean, she was literally making strides. Um, we talk about a crazy cycle. For you, what did the crazy cycle look like? Oh, well, for me, like the crazy cycle was, it was something that in my mind, like I guess in my mind I had, basically already said like this is the way my relationship's always going to be mm -hmm. like there is like i've just accepted the fact that i'm in a crappy marriage and for the rest of my life i'm going to continue to be in a crappy marriage you know and the first time we we've read the book twice before really bringing it into the maps community the first time i mean backtrack both times that we read it i would address the book from what made sense to me. So like, you know, there's a lot of things in the book that don't necessarily <laughs> mm -hmm. make sense. Yeah. You know, it's, you, it's you, not an easy read. Yeah. Per se. Right. Or you approach it from like, Oh, that, that, that doesn't seem right. fair. So like the first time we read it, I just kind of read it to check the box. The second time we read it, I was like, okay, well there's some truth in this. So let me pick out the parts of truth yep. that, that apply to me, that yep. make sense to me, that mm -hmm. seem, and then I'm just going to, you know, forget the rest. Yeah. And that yeah. was kind of my approach to the first two times reading the book. I would say mine was kind of similar, but I know it is a struggle. People have said, well, what if the other person's not doing their part of mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. And I think it is a lot harder to do that because the first two times we did it, like, you know, he might be more into it or I might be more into it. And it didn't really work because we both weren't doing it. And now we're both on the same page yep. as to what our yep. end goal is. Yep. Right. So like when I reference something and say like, you know, I'm feeling unloved because of whatever, he hears that and right. he's receptive to it. Whereas before it was like, well, I'm sorry you feel yep. unloved. Yep. That's too bad. Yep. Sucks <laughs> like, for you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I get it. Right. Right. I get it. And the, therein lies the crazy cycle. So guys, I want to ask you a question. Can you relate to this? 
Uh, you see the glass half empty, uh, but he sees the glass half full. Uh, you say, hey, do me a favor, pick up dinner on your way home. And he comes home without dinner and says, I thought you said you were going to get dinner, right? Uh, you say, we don't talk anymore. He says, well, every time I say something, you catch an attitude. Mm -hmm. um, for women, guys, here's what we know to be true. They are different than us. Mm -hmm. And if they are from Venus and we are from Mars, my question to you is, how do we all live happily ever after here on Earth? Right. And I think that one thing that we always talk about, the, the key, the, the, and we call it the sticky factor in relationships, is communication. And when you're dealing with any issue in your relationship, whether it's, you know, you're going through challenges, infidelity, whatever, or even just trying to develop that love and respect, communication is essential. You have to learn how to communicate to each other. And communication is not you just simply talking at Correct. that person. It's you're being able to speak their language. Correct. Um, we talked about the last couple of weeks that, you know, men speak in here in blue. Women speak in here in pink. And if you don't learn that and you don't learn how to decode yep. the way that your spouse speaks, that communication will be off. And so even as you're learning about love and respect, being able to, you have to know what love looks like to that other person. You Correct. have to know what respect looks like to the other person so that you can give them that. Correct. You can't give it to them the way that, you know, I may consider respect one thing, but him as a man, he considers respect something else. If I don't give him respect the way that he needs it, I'm still not respecting him. 100%. 100%. I think it Go goes ahead. back to kind of like how I think you talked in a, on a Saturday, like one of those seminar things, um, that communication is not just me getting my information out. It's being received. Too. Yes. So if you're like, well, I'm doing my side, but he's not received. Like, you know, there was a breakdown in the right. transmission. Correct. Here, Correct. So, Correct. So it didn't really work. Right. Right. And right. that's why often people will say, well, I think that you need to have good communication. And I often challenge people to say, well, any communication is good. And mm -hmm. the reason why is because if you break down the word communication, that simply means that there was a transmission and, and, and a reception. Thus, you could even call it communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It may not be what I wanted to hear. Right, right. It may not be what <laughs> I like. I may not could say I quote agree. We often go through the thing. Did did you did you understand what I was saying? Did you right. did you did, are you feeling me? I didn't ask you. Do you agree with it? Right. And oftentimes what we do is we stop short of communicating because we think there has to be quote agreement right. for communication to take place. And so therein lies the crazy cycle. The crazy cycle is when you refuse to see from a pink perspective, fellas. And ladies, you refuse to try and adjust your sight to in, at least try to see uh, through the lens of blue glasses. I know that you don't naturally do that. That's something you have to work on. But when you work on that and you do the work of it, it really works out for you because now it helps you to identify what we had in a couple of episodes ago talked about as strategies to getting off of the crazy cycle. But, but, Go ahead, babe, real but, quick. I'll speak blue when you speak pink. No, but you no, but but I may never speak pink. Then I'll speak blue when you speak pink. Why do I have to speak blue if you're not speaking pink? Y'all see the rub? Y'all y'all see the rub? <laughs> and so literally, we're going to talk about how to sort of decipher that process because at some point someone's going to have to be willing to do something different, mm -hmm. right? And so we said the crazy cycle has five different uh, strategies to, to it. Uh, number one, you have to accept the truth. The truth is, is that they see pink and I see blue. That's the truth. I need to accept that. I need to embrace that. Number two, we said that you need to speak the truth. Uh, we need to be able to focus on each other's needs and not the issue. Number three, we, we said that we need to know the truth. And if you didn't catch this a few episodes ago, uh, just scroll down and go, go to the replays. And it's all here on the YouTube channel. I want y'all to look at because we break this all the way down. I just want to set this conversation up. Number three, you need to know the truth. That means what is most people, most people, I'm going to say it again. Most people fellowship with what they want, right. not what what is. Right. And so because I can't live in the world of reality, I now am a part of this sort of other world that don't really exist, it does in my mind. And so as a result of it, I never get traction because I'm not living in truth. And so you have to know the truth. What is? What is is that she needs to feel love. Mm -hmm. She needs that like she needs air. 
He needs to feel respected. He needs that like air. Number four, you want to walk in the truth. Number five, you're going to have to grow in the truth. And the bonus that we said is that you're, somebody is going to have to go first. So today, I want to talk about what it looks like, guys, to get off of the crazy cycle. Before I do that, Sheree, can you do me a favor and read the definition of the word yield? Can you see that? Right. And yielding means to give forth or produce by a natural process or in return for cultivation. Or the second definition, which is more the one we're talking about today, is to give up or surrender oneself. He yielded himself to temptation or to give up or over, relinquish or resign to yield the floor. And so that's talking in political terms. So mm -hmm. you, I yield the floor. That means I give myself up. Mm -hmm. I give over to myself. Talk to us a little bit, Chris, about what it looked like for you to finally embrace this idea that if I don't do something, nothing will get done. Well, I kind of, like, like I said in the last episode, like I saw the growth in her and I realized like the growth was undeniable. Like if I let her go, I'm losing. Yeah. So I wanted to do everything to keep her. Yeah. And so when we came into MAPS, um, I kind of came in with the mindset of whatever you guys say, I'm going to do. Even if it makes no sense to me. <laughs> because I kind of came into it with the mindset of like, for the last eight years, I've done things the way that I thought they should be done. Mm -hmm. I've done things with uh, my point of view and it's got me nowhere. It's made everything worse. So when I came in, like even when we went to counseling, I would apply what made sense. I would apply what was fair in my eyes. So when I came in, I was like, you know what? Like, throw it to the wind. Whatever y'all say, I'm going to do, even if it doesn't make sense, because relying on my own understanding and my own feelings and emotions has done nothing but put me into this situation. Man, that's, so that's deep, Chris. I need to rely on something else because in my mind I'd said we're already at the bottom of our barrel if what y'all say doesn't work we're not going to get any worse right mm -hmm. you know right, right so let's just go ahead and start doing everything that is asked of me even if it doesn't make sense yep. because I can only get better I yep. can't get worse yeah no that all-in concept concept is, is critical right mm -hmm. here and when I said that's deep Chris most men are not going to do that mm -hmm. guys let, let me help y'all understand this the word yield says to give up. It says to surrender. It says, you know, it, it's the wave, the white flag. It, it's it's to tap out in, in, in wrestling terms. You, you, it's to just say, look, I, I'm the uncle. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Right. When you can't do that, I think that step one, you have to figure that part out before anything else happens. Right. And I think it's a matter of letting go of your pride. Because I think oftentimes we're so prideful that we don't want to admit that we've been wrong. Or that, and the truth is not even so much being wrong. If what you've been doing is not working, mm. what you've been doing has not been working. You're, you're doing the same thing and you're not seeing a change. Do something different. Isn't that the definition of insanity? insanity? Yes, 100%. it is. So, and that's what the crazy cycle is. You keep doing the same thing over and over again. Keep getting the same result. And it's not going anywhere. So be willing to humble yourself and do something different. And unfortunately, most people are not willing to humble themselves. They want to stand on principle. They want to stand on this. But this well, is what I mean. Well, well, they did this, and so I'm not going to do that. And you can do that all you want, but you're going to stay on that crazy cycle. Somebody has to be willing to humble themselves and say, okay, I'm going to try something different. Yeah. This hasn't been working. Yeah. And, you know, I think that you have to be humble enough to admit that it's not working. Yeah. Angie, and when, that's not a bad thing. I think that's that's a sign of growth. I think it is. Angie, that day that I saw you guys in that workshop and um, your face clearly said help. Mm -hmm. um, what was going through your mind in terms of, because I got to believe that you felt like you had done all you knew to do, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That, that epiphany. Talk to us a little bit about what was going through your mind in terms of accepting, I guess, that there still was more to do. Mm -hmm. You just didn't know what it what was. To do. Mm -hmm. I think I had, I mean, I'd spent hours and hours Googling, like, what can we do? We tried a couple different mm -hmm. counselors. Um, I was like, and then we got all these books, but we're reading them just to check a box. Like, mm -hmm. that didn't work either. Um, I was like, I don't know what else there is to do. And then the, the weekend workshop came up. And when you guys were talking, I was like, well, this is the only thing 
that I've heard that's any different than anything I've ever heard. So this really is my last chance, my rock bottom. I'm going to try this and I have to try it fully knowing my personality. I knew I had to <laughs> give it a hundred percent. And then if it didn't work, I was, I was honestly open to the idea. If I just try it and give it my hundred percent and it doesn't work, I can live with myself. And yep. if this didn't work out, yep. I did everything I could and I can move on, yep. mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm going to try it. And I think I heard in the both of you, like a real sincerity and truth and um, desire to help people. Whereas like counselors and even pastors um, are kind of like, yeah, yeah. And they're taking notes and checking stuff, but in their mind, they're already on the next thing they're doing or, you know, what else is going on. And I, I felt like a, I don't even know, like an instant relationship where like you genuinely wanted to help, yeah. not yeah. just like, oh, add you to our list yeah. and you can join our club. Yeah. Um, right. But like, <laughs> but you, you honestly wanted to help us. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, that's what we need because we didn't have people mm-hmm. yeah. to help us. Um, like even our families like didn't really, I mean like my family, um, we're all like, just get out, like yeah, quick, yeah, like yeah. go see the lawyer. We're going to pay for the lawyer. Like, yeah, like you're done, just get out. Um, and sadly enough, even some of our friends were. There were maybe two people that I went to church with that were like, we'll be there with you, and they were there when I was crying all the time. Um, but we didn't have the people to point us in the right direction, yep. and we were aware that we needed people that were like-minded because if we kept surrounding ourselves with people who were like get out mm-hmm. you know or it's it's his fault did you he did all of these things and you're such a princess like you're not <laughs> right um, he's the mean ogre yeah, like, yeah, it's right. he deserves to be left even, right even if he was guilty of stuff yeah like that i don't just get to dump it on him and just wait right. so um surrounding myself with people that the goal yeah. was to fix this not mm-hmm. just pacify Chris, you got something you want to add? Because I want to ask you, um, when we talk about this idea, because I think that in our culture, we understand the concept of unconditional love, right? Even if we don't do it, like we understand that. Parents understand, look, this is my child. Even if they are a serial murderer, I still love my, that's my child, right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't like what they did. I'm sad about that, but that's my child. So that's an unconditional love. Uh, But the Bible talks about in Ephesians 5, where it talks about at the end of verse 33, it says, but also there's a thing called unconditional respect, Mm -hmm. right? There was a level of disrespect that you felt from Angie that that, I legitimately gave that prevented (laughs) you from being able to love. Mm -hmm. But then there was a point where you was able to grow through and said, even when she's not respecting me. I have an obligation to love. Can you tell us a little bit about that process for you? Because a lot of people are having a hard time accepting this notion. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that if he is not going to love me, I should have to respect him? Right. Like who does that? And and, and the vice versa. Like (laughs) this woman is not respecting me. Why would I love her? Right. right. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's actually in my mind, it was two parts. Uh, The first part was I cannot... You know, if I'm going to expect her to respect me, I have, regardless of, you know, what I'm doing or how I am or am not loving her, I cannot ask her to do that if I myself am not doing that to her. You know, I can't show up and be like, well, why aren't you doing this? If she can then flip the mirror and be like, well, why aren't you doing this? Got it. Mm-hmm. You know, Got it. so that was the first part. And the second part, you know, I realized that. You know, like I told you before, like I kind of come to the realization that a relationship is never fair, Mm. period. Mm. Like, you know, at any point, you know, even right where we're at right now. We can go on to preaching now, (laughs) y'all. Even where we're at right now, we're in the best place we've ever been. Our relationship isn't fair. Mm -hmm. You know, perfect example. Yes, just yesterday, I was having a bad day. Mm -hmm. So... You know, when I have bad days, she has to invest more. She has to carry more. Mm -hmm. When she was going for her CHT, I had to invest more and carry. So, like, a relationship is never going to be fair, good or bad. Someone is always going to have to Mm. go, you know, past that point. And I feel like if 
if I was to approach our relationship to the point of, well, I'm going to do what's fair, mm -hmm. I'm drawing lines in the sand. I'm setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. And, That's good. and the moment I start setting boundaries that I'm not willing to invest past, I'm automatically harming our relationship because mm. I'm saying I'm only going to go this far. Wow. And if you don't come up to this point, well, then I've done everything I can. And wow. that's, that's good that you said that because people often, they do use that whole 50, 50. Mm -hmm. If you have in your mind, you're only giving 50%, that's that line. Yeah. That's and the so line. Yeah. And so you're not going to give any more than that. And oh, that's, that's why, you know, we always tell you, relationships are not 50, 50. You right. have to give a hundred percent of yourself. They're supposed to give a hundred percent of themselves. You just give your all. And if you approach it from just, I'm here to give my all, there is, yes, there'll be times when one will be given 100, one may be given 20. But if you're giving your all, it doesn't matter the percentage that the other person is giving. And people get hung up on that whole, yeah. they have this 50-50 mindset. Well, if he, and that's where that whole, well, if he's not doing, I'm not going to do it. Or if she's not doing, that's because you're thinking 50-50. Marriage is not 50-50. People get that out of your mind. It never has been. It never it has been. It doesn't work that way. Guys, one of the things that I hear you saying, Chris, and, and this is so powerful, and that is when I draw the line, I've already pre-committed to myself right, I'm that I'm only that. going so far. Yeah. And I think that when the line is erased, when there is no line, you don't have a place that you're saying in your mind, I'm going to go up to here and, and that's it. Stop. As opposed to, so when I hear Cherie say, we have to be willing to bring 100%. Let's say, like Chris, I'm having a bad day. This morning, I was having a bad morning. Mm -hmm. Cherie said something and it got me stuck, like in my mind. And I couldn't even go further because she was introducing to me. And y'all have to understand something about my temperament. I don't do details well. So she mentioned something to me that required me to go into detail mode. And I was not on that page. I was stuck. Well, at that particular point, I was only bringing about 30% to the table, mm -hmm. right? Mentally. And so I found myself getting chippy. I found myself getting short. I found myself getting impatient and all that. So one of the things that I did, because I understand this work, I began to own my 30%. How does that look? Hey, babe, I'm stuck. I hear what you're saying. You're looking for an answer. I don't have one. I want to get an answer. I am going to process that if you'll give me a moment, meaning be quiet, stop talking <laughs> so that I can process what you just said. Right. I will give you an answer that's proper, a proper response. Mm -hmm. But if you keep talking, I will stay stuck. Right. That is me bringing 100% of my 30%. Right. Does that, does that, does that make mm -hmm. sense? And I think that when we don't do that, guys, Chris, you put it in some, I, I love the language, you harm your relationship. Mm -hmm. Like you literally are sabotaging your own situation because of your, your non-willingness to do whatever it takes. And I think that unfortunately, most people get there because emotionally somehow you feel entitled because you feel like, quite frankly, I've done this, 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 and this. And after all, they did this to me and I should feel. Mm -hmm. fill in the blank and I think that's always dangerous mm -hmm. anybody got anything else they want to share on that because there was one other thing that I want to do and we're going to run um, guys first of all if you guys are listening just do me a favor any questions anything that you have put them in the chat we'll engage you uh, if you are looking for a community uh, I don't care where you are in the world the neat thing about our community is that it's online and so although we happen to live in the same city we don't get to see each other super often physically, but we see each other every single week, several times a week in this online group coaching environment. And so we want to encourage you to click the link, the crcoach.com, glennpbrooksjr.com, uh, click the link in, in the chat. Somebody will put it in the chat and uh, come come follow us, come figure this out because help is, is, is available. You don't have to struggle on your own. Right. And go I ahead. just wanted to go back real quick. And I think that you know, and I, I've talked about this before. When people get married, I don't think people really listen to the vows. Mm -hmm. You know, the hope for better, for worse. And I think that somehow people think that there's a clause in there that says it's going to be fair. That's not in the vows. It's not fair. Right. You know, life is not fair. We should put that in vows. This is not <laughs> going to be fair, and I'm going to accept that in year 15 when right. I don't want to hear it. And I think <laughs> that, you know, we have to get past that mindset that, you know, well, if they're not doing, I'm not going to do, or this isn't fair. It's not fair that I'm the one that always does. Yeah. If you have committed to the relationship and you want the relationship to work, 
you should be willing to do whatever it takes. And what I will tell people oftentimes, and Angie, you proved this to be true. When somebody goes first, people tend to follow. Right. Here's what I'm going to submit to you. And I tell people who I coach all the time, I'm your coach, not your pastor. Right. Let's get that straight. Truth. When you change, you put the ball in other people's courts to do something. Right. They will often either change or they won't. They will either get right or they'll yeah. get out. Yep. Either way, you win. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because your peace of mind comes back. And now you don't have to, quote, make them do anything. Right. We realize you can't do that anyway. That's not even possible. But if you take 100% of that energy and what you're feeling and you put that on you, I think, and I've watched it, particularly in their case, Angie changed mm -hmm. to the point to where it uh, it was attractive to Chris and he came running right to say look how can I how how, how must I be saved like <laughs> like like literally I I want my man like I I gotta figure this out right and also your motive for your going first it can't be because you're you, I'm doing this to make them do something or I'm doing this because if I do this then they're gonna respond. And we talked about this in the ladies group. You have to do what's right, what you know is right, the right thing to do. So if you know that it's not right for you yeah. to be mean and talk to a person in a certain way, you do it because that's doing what's right. Because you're trying to be a better person, not necessarily to change them. And what typically happens as we grow, as we improve individually, it becomes attractive to other people and it will their response will often change. Yeah. But if your motive for doing this it's because I'm going to do this for the next 30 days and if it, to make him change. Right. It's not going to work. It's not going to work because your motives are not pure. Right. Your I think are, that's okay. key because I know in the ladies group, it's like, how do I get my husband to, you don't get you him, you to, can't do get him to do anything. You do your part. And I do acknowledge that the unconditional respect is not something that our culture right. is really all that good at. Right. So it is a struggle. It, like, right, it's right. very unnatural. But for those people who are Christian and believe the Bible, like it says right there. Right. So if you believe that that book is true, why don't you believe that that last part of that right. sentence is right. true? Mm -hmm. right. and, and, and I think what I hear you saying, Angie, because if you do believe it's true, then what you'll do is you'll walk in that truth that you believe. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to submit, if you walk in that truth that you believe, then you'll get a chance to see the benefit of that truth. Right, and even in a practical sense, okay, so you read the Bible, you know what it says, but you like, eh, I'm not gonna, I ain't going to do that. You respect your boss at work. If you live in the world mm -hmm. and you got a job and you may not like that person and they may be a total jerk, but you're not going to just go off with that person. You're going to talk to them in a respectable manner. If you can do that for somebody outside of your home, why can't you do that for your spouse? It's a choice. Yeah, that was my behavior. I could I could be really nice and polite at work, but I can be nasty at home. And like, why was it okay for me to be extremely disrespectful and mean at home, but be proper and polite? At work? Right, mm, right. And so you just apply the same, treat them like they're your boss. Yeah, I mean, Chris, and that regard, or give them what you would give, give them. Right, give yeah. them the same respect you would give somebody else outside of the house. I was going to kind of say the same thing, like. You know, how would I treat, like, it's more of an integrity issue. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you'd mentioned vows. Like, those vows, every vow that I told her was me promising her something without any expectation of something from her to me. Mm -hmm. So, if I made a promise to you, even if you make me mad, I would still do everything within my power to fulfill that promise. Mm -hmm. Correct. Because I'm, Correct. I have integrity. I'm going right. to do that. Right. You know, and the a big pushback that I've kind of heard recently is just like a lot of women were like, um, I'm trying to think how I can say this. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the best okay. way of saying this. Uh, I hear a lot of pushback in regards to... I had a brain fart. It's okay. Buffering right here. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, we're, we're buffering. <laughs> we're both. No, I think... If, oh, go ahead. I remember what I was going to say. You know, I hear a lot of women say, well, you know, you don't understand my husband. He's, you know, doing... Like, perfect example, I had an affair on her. Mm -hmm. The book is calling you to respect them, not their behavior. Right. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. so, like you had said, like, how would you talk to your boss? Right. Like, I would talk to 
even if you made me mad, Glenn, I would talk to you respectfully. That doesn't mean that I condone your behavior. Right. Correct. Like, right. I'm going to respect right. you as a person. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I'm going to respect your sinful behavior. Yeah. Right. So right. I can address your sinful behavior, but I can do it in a respecting way because I'm respecting you, not Correct. hundred percent. hundred percent. It's no different than when we're coaching people. Oftentimes, you know, the husband may be dead wrong, right? And I have to address him straight on in front of his wife, which can come across as extremely disrespectful if I don't uh, handle that correctly. And the way, but what I'm not going to do is not miss that moment. I'm going to speak directly to him, but I'm going to do it in a respectful manner. And if I mess that up, that's going to look like something where I'm going to come back and say, you know what? I didn't mean that that, that way. Let me take another shot at that. I apologize. It shouldn't have, I shouldn't have shared that with you with that tone. I had a person I literally had to say to a husband and a wife and he felt disrespected because my tone was off because quite frankly I was annoyed I was frustrated that he was treating his wife the way he was treating her and I got frustrated and it came out in my tone and he said to his wife look I don't like how he handled me and 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 it, she she said that with me and I said listen you're 100 percent correct and I had to apologize so that we could get the issue back on track so that we could deal with that. And that's exactly what you have to do inside of your relationship. Guys, if you're just jumping in, this is Breakfast with the Brookses. We're here every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Uh, live on YouTube. This is a rebroadcast uh, of a continued conversation. Uh, we're live in the chat and we're definitely talking to you live there. But I want to help you guys understand you don't have to struggle by yourself. And if you are, uh, I will promise you that we, our community, is is a of, can be of help. And if you don't uh, take advantage of that, then what you're agreeing to do is to do this on your own. And whatever comes with that comes with that. But I'm just telling you, you don't have to suffer in silence. You don't have to suffer by yourself, ladies. You don't have to feel like you're you're alone in this, fellas. You don't feel like she just won't listen, and that this crazy cycle, like Chris said earlier, is something that you just have to subscribe to and know that hey, this is where you're going to be for the rest of your marriage. I think that's a horrible way to live. Right, and I just have, want to say one last thing. And I often hear, you know, everybody's asking, well, how do I do it? How do I do that? How how do I do it? And I'm a firm believer, it's a choice. It's simply making the choice to do it. It's not that complicated. It's not, you know, you need 10 steps to do it. You choose that I'm going to respect him. You choose that I'm going, it's a choice. It's like love. You just make a choice and then you change your behavior in accordance with that choice. I think people are looking for a magic pill, looking for us to give them a magic answer. The answer is choose. Choose to love your wife. Ladies, choose to respect your husband. When you make that choice, and you tell yourself that I'm going to respect him no matter what he does. I'm going to show him respect. Right. I'm going to be respectful. I'm going to speak to him respectfully. I'm going to show him respect. You know, it doesn't mean we don't address issues. It doesn't yep. mean that we don't talk about things. But I'm going to talk to him respectfully. I'm not going to curse him out. I'm not going to throw him under the bus. I'm not going to tr talk to him like he's a child. I'm not going to berate him in public. You know, I'm going to talk to him respectfully. And for men, that means that regardless of what she's doing, I'm going to be loving towards yeah, her. 100%. I'm not going to be mean. I'm not going to be nasty. I'm not going to, you know, shut her out. I'm not going to ignore her. I'm going to show her love. Yeah. And it's simply a choice. And, you know, that the thing that frustrates me is people always are like, well, I don't know how to do that. I can't do that. <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. Choose to do it. Just choose. Listen, guys, and I'll, I will leave them with this. Um, the, this the, 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 um, changing is not hard. Mm -hmm. Making the decision to change is what's hard. Yep. And I think being mm -hmm. patient and giving it time, because I've heard right. you multiple times saying, give it time. And people think time is like, a week, Two weeks. A month? No. Like, yeah. good now? Yeah. Like, no, no. Yeah. it might be a while. Thousand percent. Right. You're going right. to have to take that timeline off the table right. to allow patients to have its perfect work. Yeah, I've been doing but, this for two but, weeks, and, yeah, I, don't see and I don't see any change. It's like, no, take your, I, I tell people all the time, keep your, keep, keep your focus on the game, not the scoreboard. Right. Like, like if, if you want to advance the ball, uh, you, you're going to have to take your eyes off the scoreboard, and you're going to have to put it on the game so that you can... Um, execute the play that you need mm -hmm. to do in order to be able to get the end result. Guys, this has been a rich conversation. I appreciate y'all for showing up. Thank you so much. Uh, if you guys are first timers, again, do us a favor. Please subscribe to our channel. Uh, ring the bell. Make sure that uh, you get those notifications every week. And we'll be back next week with another show. Appreciate y'all. If you enjoyed this, let us know in the chat. And uh, at the end of the day, guys, I promise you, we, we all need, need some, some help. Y'all be good. We'll talk soon.